What's going on everybody? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be creating our first Node.js Express and MongoDB uh, API, RESTful API. What we're going to be building is a simple motivational quote generator so you or API so you can get, add, create, update and even get random uh, get all get all of the different sort of API routes you would normally get in a API um, to be able to use on a front end project. So we're not going to be doing the front end of this. We're going to be using something known as Postman. We'll get into that in a second to actually see the um, or to test the API. Um, but before we get started, um, there's a few prerequisites we need for this uh, video. The first one is Node.js. If you're not familiar with Node.js, I, I suggest you pause this video, head off to find a different video about Node.js. We've done a lot on this channel if you want to search this channel, but there is a lot more on just getting started with Node.js. Once you've gone and get situated with uh, learning how to install and get Node.js, um, then we're going to head over to Postman. Now, Postman. It's awesome. It basically allows you to uh, test APIs and a lot more than just that, but it's really cool. Um, and to get it, you need to scroll all the way down here. You can see download app. You click download app and it will take you to the postman forward slash downloads. And here you can download the app. Um, you can also try it on the web, um, but I'm pretty sure on the web you can't use your local host. The final thing you're going to need is MongoDB installed. Now, again, if you don't have a MongoDB server set up or a local server, then you're also going to have to pause this video, go figure out how to set that up, and then come back. Okay, if you want to get started, we need to uh, basically create a new um, folder inside of our. Uh, well, wherever you're going to build it, so I'm going to do here make dirt, and I'm just going to call this folder uh, REST API, or maybe even just uh, YouTube. Uh, CD into this, so I'm going to CD into YouTube, and then I'm going to run npm. So once you have Node installed, so you can run npm and then init to start a new Node application. So actually, it gives us a name. We're just going to say uh, quotes API. Hit enter, version number, that's fine, don't need a description. We're going to say app.js. Uh, we don't need any of this keywords or for you can put your own name here. Um, license to some rumor, hit enter and OK. So that's cool. If we do ls, you can see we've got package.json here, which is perfect. Um, but we also need to install some dependencies. Now, dependencies or node modules are, allows you to basically add on to Node.js. And one of the ones we're going to need is npm for install or you can write install and then we need to get express body hyphen parser and also mongoose uh, which will be our ORM to connect us to um, MongoDB so we've got express body parser and mongoose I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna download or install all three of these into our package.json file along with a node modules folder so if we do LS or LSA um, you can see we've got a node modules and a package JSON file. We need one more thing as well. We need a def dependency. So we need to say npm i hyphen d and we need to install nodemon. Now nodemon allows us to refresh our server without having to stop it and start it every single time. So once we've got this installed, uh, well once you've got that written in, hit enter and this should also then install nodemon. Cool. Now that's installed. We now need to just open this up in our text editor. For me, it's going to be Visual Studio Code. And there we go. So let's open up our package.json. So as you can see here, it tells us what we've got. We've got our name, we've got everything else, and you can see our dependencies we installed are here. Make sure you've got all the ones I have and also uh, dev dependencies here, which is Nodemon. Now we need to change this scripts here. I'm just going to delete this and create a start script. And inside the start script, we're going to say Nodemon app.js now if we run this right now so if we just open up our uh, shell there we go um, if we open our shell we can run npm start now this is going to error because there is no app.js file so let's clear this close this and let's create a new app.js file so we've got that and perfect so now in the app.js file, this is where we're going to actually create our surfer, this is where everything's going to run from, and this is how we're going to get started with our Node.js um, RESTful API. Um, what we need to do is create a constant, um, which is called express, which is equal to require. Require basically allows um, you to pull in 
uh, different dependencies from your node modules or anywhere else, in fact, uh, just by pulling it in and put, storing it inside a variable. Um, and here we can say const mongoose. So we need to also get mongoose, which is going to be require mongoose. Now we're going to need body parser. Uh, we don't need it just yet, we need it soon. Uh, and we're going to require body hyphen parser. What body parser does is allows us to take any so when we when we post a request or set get a request from our postman or our application our client our few js app or wherefore we're getting the request from to the server body parser allows us to pass it using json or whatever else you want to pass it with um, it just means we can pass the body into a readable format for our server make it easier for us to use we then want to start our app so here we're going to say const app is equal to express with parentheses like that. So we're just calling express as a function, uh, which is going to basically create our express application. So let's start our surface. So we could do app.listen. And now we need to give it a port number. You can give it really anything you want, as long as it's like 8080, 3000. I'm going to do 3000. And then you can give it a callback. So you could have a function that runs once um, it successfully starts the surfer. I'm just going to console.log listening on port 3000 now i'm just going to add some comments here just so it's easier we're going to say starting surfer we're going to uh, call this one setting or and what's it say here it just says create create express app and then we can create our first route now a route or a route inside of express basically allows us to define our paths, our routes, so forward slash home, forward slash about us, stuff like that, like the URL we're going to use. So we'll say app.get. Now you can use more than just get, you can have a post type request, you can have a get request, you can have patch, delete, whatever you want, but the most common one is a get. Um, and you can also pass files using this. Now this takes two options, this get, you can do a forward slash or your path, and then you need to give it your callback. And in your callback, it's, we're going to do an arrow function. We're just going to take a request and a response parameter. Now, the request gives us every single thing we need um, from the request. So let's say if you pass body, which you're going to need your body parser for, or if you, um, or if you got any parameters or anything like that for the request, it's going to have anything that was being sent to the server. Now, the response is anything we're going to be sending back to the client or whatever calls the API. So let's say res dot send and this is just going to send a response back to things so we can just pass hello world hit save and then if we now go start our surfer over here i'm just going to clear this oh clear this i'm just going to say npm start like we did earlier it's now going to start surfer and as you can see it comes like listening on port 3000 so if we head back over to our um web here close these and just run localhost 3000 you can see we get hello world now if we do something let's say um about you can see we cannot get about but if we created an about about you can just put in here hello uh about go back refresh and you can see we get about and now if we go back we get hello world as you can see it's quite uh you can create as many routes as you want and stuff like that, which is really nice. So we've got app.get. So this is just our home route. We're not going to do anything with this home route. It's just going to sit like that. We're actually going to have an API sort of route we set up. So let's get started with setting up some other things. So before we carry on, there's something else you need to know. We need to know about middleware. And as I said earlier, body parser is actually middleware we need to declare in our app. App Middleware can be anything from um, a basic passing of requests and stuff like that, checking requests before it happens, or it could also be authentication. So let's say if we're setting up some sort of authentication, we could have app dot uh, use, and this is how we set middleware. Uh, we could say anything from let's say the quotes um, API. We want this function or arrow function to run. We can just console log saying or do whatever we wanted in here. But we can also use other things, like we can just pass back body parser. So if we don't put anything, it means if we don't give it an actual path, it will automatically assume we want this to happen on every single route. And we're going to say body parser 
dot json so we're going to set our json parser body parser up straight away which means as soon as we get started we'll actually um be setting up uh, we'll be setting up body parser when we pass a request we'll actually get json back now there's one more thing we've got to do in here and we need to connect to our database so i'm just going to say database i'm also going to put middleware here and then i'm going to put roots here save let's go back to underneath database now underneath database we're going to use mongoose so we're going to say mongoose dot connect and now we need a path to our database now if you're running a local surfer you can probably copy what i write in here but if you're not running a local surfer and you're running one on a web they normally will give you a url or an ip address you can do so i'm going to say mongo db forward slash local host forward slash and then whatever the name of our database is or our collection or documents is um, so what we're going to say here is localhost and then we're going to give it a thing so i'm going to say um just uh quotes or testimonial um, motivation we'll call it motivation okay now we've got mongoose connected we can actually go back and you'll see some errors here so now we'll connect or not some errors some warnings all it's telling us is that um, we need to add some options to our um, connection here. So you can actually do a second parameter, which could be some options. And the first one is use new URL parser because it's going to be, as you can see, it says here it's going to be de deprecated or de depreciated um, in the next in a future version. We need to use this to actually work in the current version. And then if we get this one here, use unified topology. Uh, which is also just in monitoring and stuff here. Um, it also will get rid of all our errors. And now we just get listening on port 3000. But how do we know we've connected to the database? You can run something called DB. So let's create a new database uh, variable. And this is going to be equal to our mongoose connection. Um, and what this means is um, we add our mongoose connection is the connection we've made to our database. So let's say db dot once open. So when we first launched, when we first set up, we're going to go through and we're going to say in here, oh, we can do a callback. And in this callback, we can run console dot log connected to Mongo db database dot 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 for the suspenser dot 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 of course. And as you can see, it says connected to MongoDB database. You can also do a lot more in here. So when you open it, you can also do it so it checks some settings or do whatever you want in here. But for now, we don't actually have to do anything. So this is basically it for our first little um, area here. So now we're gonna actually set up some routes and be able to make requests. So let's get Postman open. So if we go here and we type Postman, obviously, you guys need to install it and open it however you would on your machine. If you're on Windows or whatever, you can also use Postman. Um, so you just need to open it up and then I'll go through this with you. Obviously, I showed you where to download it. Make sure you download it and make sure you have it installed on your machine. Okay, everyone, as you can see, Postman open. Now, it may have something what pops up at front telling you to log in and stuff. Uh, I'm just checking it's in the right place. I'm going to pull it on the right, left side of our code. Um, but for now, don't worry, this is what we need to see. Once you see this, we can start creating a thing. So let's create a new collection. A collection is just a, it's like a folder for the um, routes we're gonna be using. As you can see, I already have a motivational quotes app here, which we have all the requests in. These are the requests we're actually gonna be creating. So we have a get all quotes. We have a create new quotes. We have a get quote by ID, a update quote by ID, and get a random quote. Um, and these are the ones we're going to be creating, but we're not going to use this. We're going to create a complete new one. We'll just call it um, quotes app. Click create. And here we are. We have this. Now let's just close this. Now, if we want a new request, we can just add it up here and we can put in, for example, HTTP forward slash local host 3000. And if we just call this our main route send, you can see we get hello world. If you remember correctly, our in our forward slash we just call hello world now we can set routes or routes inside of um, our app here um, and if we just or some sorry some additional routes as well as this so let's create a um, quotes routes section um, so i'm just going to create here i'm going to say const 
quote root is going to be equal to require. And now we're going to get from our file system. So we've got to do dot slash. We're going to go into a roots folder and get a quotes file, which is going to be our quotes root. We're going to set that file up in a second. We're then going to say app.use. And we say forward slash quotes. This means anything, any roots we create inside of our quotes root will actually have this prepended to it. So it's going to be forward slash quotes, forward slash whatever roots we define. And I'll explain this further when we get in. Let's say quotes root in our underneath that. And then there you go. So that is actually setting up a new root for us. So let's go into our folder structure here. Let's create a new file. Let's say roots forward slash quotes.js and there you go we've got a new folder of roots and this is what that is calling now if we save this we're going to get some errors um, because we need it we need to actually pass back our router from our quotes now to do that we're just going to say const express is equal to require express because root roots are actually a an express feature we're going to say const router is equal to express dot router and then we're just going to say const well not going to do anything there sorry um, we're then going to basically set up our root so let's call one called get all roots and what we're going to say here is router or router dot get forward slash so what this is going to say in our app you see we have this prepended quotes that means if we just do forward slash quotes we're going to get that root there so we can then say request response and in this all we're going to do is log we're just going to log anything so let's say get all roots save let's go back to postman let's save this one we're just going to name it we're going to put it in motivation or quotes app sorry and we're just going to say uh root because uh, that that one doesn't actually do anything we don't actually need that one i don't know why i created it now if we create a new one and we copy the base url here and paste it in here now what we can do is say quotes forward slash and now if we save this one we can call this get all quotes save it in there and if we send this could not send we've got an error let's have a look what it is uh, router.use requires middleware function but got an object oh that is because if we go back across here we actually need to, so what we're doing now in here we're requiring quotes but to require something, we actually need to export it from here. So we'd say a, a module dot exports is equal to our router. So our router function here. Now, if we go back, you can see it's now working again. And if we click send, oh, we've console logged it, didn't we? Yeah, we console logged. When you console log in MongoDB, oh no, in, in Node, it actually goes to our uh, database console here as you can see there so we don't actually want that we actually want to say rest.send because we want to send something back to surfer and we can say get all routes now let's check this is working let's go back let's hit send and finally we got a response back which is great um, you can see all the status so we got a status of 200 a time of 30 milliseconds and the size of it we get loads of different features in mongo and it's really cool you can see we got body and all these other ones we're going to go over in a minute so that's cool so we got that route Let's set up the um, create a new quote. And in here, we're just going to say router. And now instead of using dot get, we're going to use dot post because you need to post to uh, create a new one. Um, so we're going to post a forward slash new, which means we're going to do for quotes forward slash new. And then we're going to say request response. Uh, just quickly get the colons in there. And then we're just going to say rest dot send and we're going to say create new quote hit save go back and let's create a let's copy this let's create a new pass this in and we've got to change this request to a post request because we'll make a post request and we're going to say forward slash new and then if we hit save we can save this as create new quote save and now if we click send, you can see it returns create new quote. Now, if we change this to get and we do a send, we're going to get cannot get quotes new because it's not a get request. We're looking for a post request. Send and we get create new quote, which is working perfectly. 
So let's now head and actually set up the create a new. We need to actually set this up. Now to do this, to add, we need to obviously store stuff in our MongooseDB database. We need to create something to connect to this. So we're going to create something called a model now in, um, or in Mongoose, you create schemas and models. So if we create a new folder, we're going to call it uh, models. And in here, we're going to right click and call this quotes.js. This is going to be our quotes model. Now inside of here, we need to get um, our mongoose again. So we're going to say mongoose is equal to require mongoose. And then we're going to create a new mongoose quote schema. Now a schema is basically, we're giving some rules to our, how what we can store inside of our database collection here. So we're creating a quote schema and now we're creating a new mongoose schema and all we're saying is we're giving some options. So we can say, for example, we want to pass through content and we want it to be a string. You can also pass an object in here and say type string required equal true, for example. And this means it would be required and it is a type of string. For now, we're just going to say string. We want um, content with string. We also want an author, which is going to be a string. And that's all we need. We don't need to give it an ID because Mongoose will give us an ID automatically for the um, document we pay, place in. So in Mongoose, if you have collections and inside your collections, you have documents and documents are where are what we're storing here. So let's just say module.exports. And now we need to create a model from our schema. So we're going to say mongoose.model. And now we need to give it a name. So we're going to say quote i'm then going to pass through the schema uh, which is the schematics of the uh what we want to create and this way we're just exporting this meaning we can import this in let's say our roots so we'll say const uh quote is equal to we could do quote model but i'm just gonna say quote is equal to require dot oh excuse me sure do what you want to do dot dot slash and as you can see we get models forward slash quotes so we've had to go back a directory that's why we've done double dots there and now we're getting this quotes file and importing it here now we can actually go in here and say for example we want to create a new quote quote right that means we're going to need to pass some body into our request right because we're going to need to pass something through when we create it so let's just see what happens here instead of doing this here we can actually get request dot body which is the body which gets passed through and as you know we installed body parser which is going to allow us to return it as json and that's what we're doing here so we're going to say rest dot json request dot body so whatever we send to this is going to come back to us so if we go back here in our create new quote we need to go to our body here now we can select raw and i'm going to change this to json because we're going to be sending json across so now let's rate some json let's say here we need content this was one of our schema items. So if we go back and look at our model, you can see in our schema, we have content and author. So that means we need to pass through content and author. Let's go back. So we're gonna say content. This is just gonna be um, super motivating quote, exclamation mark, because you know, makes it more motivating. And then we're gonna say our author is obviously me, um, Tyler Potts. So now let's click send. And as you can see, it's passed back our data here. So if we go back to our app here, that means we can actually use this to create our new uh, quote or a new document inside of our MongoDB database. So let's now do that. So let's just, we're gonna return something regardless. So what we wanna do here is just go constant, we, a new quote, which is gonna be equal to new quote, calling our a quote here and we can pass through an object or as it says here a document which would require our content um, which would be what if we wanted and also our author um, here and now this would actually allow us to save this and pass it through to our or and send it back but we don't want to do it like this we can we actually we're getting we know we're getting our request we're getting it from our request.body so we're going to say request.body which shortens it down a little there we don't want to we then want to save this so all this is doing is creating a new quote so let me show you what happens here if we return new quote 
like this and we go back and we send all we're seeing here is the generation of the id but this hasn't saved to our database yet to save it to our database what we need to do is we're going to do an async await method here so before the parenthesis on request we're going to say async and then in here we're just going to go const saved quote is equal to await new quote dot save and it's as simple as that now we could actually shorten this and just put this straight into there and pass back our new quote so if we go back and we click send we've got no we've actually got i believe we've actually got an error there oh sorry we needed we would to do that we would need to actually call a wait in front there my bad we need to do dot save here and let's remove this there we go new quote dot save and oh we've got a double await so we're doubling up save quote and now if we pass back our saved quote and we come back and now we make a send you can see we actually get this version here um, which is zero we've got an author which is me content here which could be our quote and then an id uh, which is awesome so we've got all that passed through so now that's actually saved inside of our database so let's create a second one quickly let's say not so motivating quote by someone else who else can we say uh, bobby jr click send and as you can see we've saved this one into our database now let's check this has actually worked so let's go back in here and let's actually return our quotes so let's come here let's just go const quotes is equal to and now we're going to use async again so up here we're going to say async and we're going to say await quote so we're just calling our quote we're not creating a new one we're just using the quote uh, model to basically go dot find and this all this does is we'll find all of them you can also do find one which will return the latest one but we're just going to do dot find so quote dot find and we await it and then we can do res dot json quotes which will return all of our quotes so if we go back and we go to get all quotes and you can see we called it here if we now click send you can see we get return we've even got two of these uh, we've obviously done it too many times um, but you can see here we have multiple quotes inside of our database now which is awesome so we've got we've now got a get all quote and a create new quote so your your api is pretty much done <laughs> but we've got a few more things we can actually do so we've got a get root and we've got a post root so we've create and we can get let's what happens if we just want to get one what happens if we know the id and we just want to get it one so let's say we want to get a specific quote let's start doing that now let's shut this as well we only need this file now i'm going to zoom in a little just to make it easier for you guys to read so now let's say we want to get one specific one. So let's start off with our the exact same thing, router.get, because we're getting something again. And let's say forward slash get, because we want to do quotes, forward slash get. But this time, we actually want to pass through a parameter. Now, we can pass through a special parameter called an ID. Now, what this is, or it's not called an ID, it's a semicolon here, or colon here, which denotes or tells us that this is a variable. Whatever comes after forward slash get is not going to be the same. And what we're going to be able to do is we're going to get that from our root and we're going to be able to use it inside of our body here. So we're going to do async again because it's all going to be async and um, await because we're getting it from the database, meaning it's not instant. So we need to await for something to come back. So what we're going to say here is const q, which is going to be our quote. We're going to say it's equal to await. And we're going to say quote dot find and actually we have loads of options here we have find by id and update find one find one delete and a lot more options here but what we're going to do is just find by id because we just want to return it so what happens here is this actually takes an id or we can pass through here we can say underscore id it takes through some options so you can search by id here which is going to be this and then we're just going to say request dot params Dot id so as you can see this here params is what we're getting inside of our string here and we're going to get the id which is equal to this now if we name this let's say test we would then need to say params.test to get this back 
But for now, we're just going to keep at ID because it makes things simple. So then we just need to say rest.json Q, which is going to be a quote. So let's create a new area here. So let's create a new. This is going to be a get request. Let's just copy the get all quotes part there. Paste that in. And now we're going to take an, um, we're going to do get forward slash and then an ID. So we can get these IDs. Let's go back to our get all quotes. And here you can see we've got some IDs. Let's say we want to get uh, not so motivating quotes. So we're going to copy this ID. We're going to go into our request here and we're just going to pass through this ID. And then we're just going to hit send. And as you can see, we just get the one quote, which is not so motivating quote, Bobby Jr., which is exactly what we wanted. So now not only have we managed to get a new quote, uh, we've, well, not only can we get all of them, we can now get a singular one, which is awesome. So let's save this and call this get specific quote by ID and just save that in here. There you go. So we've got get all quotes, create a new quote and get a specific quote. So our little application, our Node.js API is coming together really well. But there's a few more things we need to do. We need to be able to update one. What happens if we've made a spelling mistake or, for example, we've created uh, one too many. See, we've got an extra one here, which we don't want. We're going to need to be able to delete and get these ones as well. So let's create a new route. Well, let's go in here and create a new one. So the next one, we're going to go do a delete. Oh, that's delete quote. Now we're just going to say router.get and we're just going to say delete. And we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to pass through an ID of the one we want to delete. And again, async. We're going to pass request, response. I'm really bad at typing right now. I don't know why. Um, and in here, we're just going to say constant, uh, the one we want to delete. So we're just going to say, or the, we're just going to say result, because this one is just going to get a result back. We're not going to get the actual whole quote back so we're going to say await quote dot find by id and delete then we're just going to pass through the id the same way we did before so we're going to say request dot params dot id and then we're just going to response dot json our result now also i notice there's an extra space there so now if we go back here and we copy this request here we create a new request. Oh, we also don't want to use a get. We want to use a delete router.delete method. So in here, we're going to go get and select delete. We're going to pass this through and we don't want that ID. We actually have a duplicate here. So let's copy the first one here and let's paste that in. So now we're going to delete that second duplicate ID. We can then hit send. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to save this first and it's just going to be called delete a quote, hit save, so we've got it in there. Now if we hit send, cannot delete quote. Oh, as you can see, I kept it as get. This should now need to be renamed to delete quote. So you can see here quote, delete, and then we've got it here. Now if we hit send, you can see it's just passed back this. But if we go to our get all quotes and we send the request again, you can see we no longer have three, we only have two because one of them has been deleted. So there we go, our delete quotes has now been set up. Now the next thing to do is we're gonna to need to be able to update one. So if we go back to our get all quotes, we actually wanna update not so motivating quotes. We don't want an exclamation mark at the end. We don't want that. So let's copy this ID. Well, we don't need that yet. Let's go in here and set up a update a quote. Just wanna make delete a quote, update a quote. Now in here, we're just gonna say router dot patch, because patch means we're gonna be patching it up or basically um, sorting it out. <laughs> we're gonna call this update and then we're gonna do the exact same thing again. We're gonna pass an ID. We're just gonna say async request response. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say const Q, which is going to be our new quote, is equal to a wait. I'm going to say quote dot update one. So what we can do here is we can actually pass through the ID. 
we can actually pass through anything in here. We could give it the author name or whatever, but it's going to find the first one. So we're going to get the ID, which is going to be get it from the request.params.id again, because again, we're passing through this ID param. And then we're going to do something called set. So in here, this is where we pass through our second document. But we only want to set, we want to set a new document. So we don't want to, what we're going to do is we're going to use this dollar set here. And then we're going to say request.body. So we're going to get the request body we send through because we're going to be updating this. We need to send something new through. So we're going to get request.body. We're then going to just return re json.q, not one. No, again, not one Q, please. There we go. So what this set does is basically we're setting the new values. So we're setting the new values for our um, thing here. So we've got not so motivating quote. Let's copy this. Let's create a new request. We're going to do a patch. Um, and we actually need to get this paste forward slash update forward slash. And then we need the ID. So let's copy this ID now. Paste it in there. And this is the one we're going to be updating. But we actually need to pass a body through as well. So let's go raw JSON. And we need to pass the new object here. So whatever we add in here, if we add author in here, um, we need to make that means we're going to update the author's name. We don't want to update the author's name for this one, as you can see. So we're not going to pass through author. We're just going to pass through what we want to update. If you pass through author and you don't change it, it won't do anything. So there's no point in doing it. You could just do a singular one. If you pass author, author's name, but you don't put anything with it, then it's also going to throw, it's going to delete it completely from author from the array. It's going to say null here. So what we want to do is we just want to get content. So for now, we're just going to do bam, content. And let's say we just want to get the exact same one. So let's copy this. But let's not do it with the quote. So not so motivating quote, dot, 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 just so it's a bit more distinctive. Now, if we hit send, you can see it says n, n modified. That means one of them is modified and one is done. So if we go back to get all quotes and we click send, you can see it's now been updated. Not so motivating quote. Let's go back here and let's go in here and just say author. But let's not pass anything. Let's just leave it like that. And we hit send. That means if we go back to our get all quotes and we click send, you can see our author's now missing. So you don't want to send the second one if you're not going to actually update it. This was by Bobby Jr. Let's hit send again. Update, and as you can see, it's now back and updating here, which is perfect. So we only pass through the stuff we want to change. Let's save this as update a quote. Save to quote app. Now the final one to do, which is actually just a bonus API route we're going to do, is going to be get a random quote. So we've set up all our routes so far. Let's have a look at them. We've got get all routes, which is just the most basic version of the routes you can get. We've got create a new quote, um, which is creating a new one. We're then going to get get specific quote, which is getting it by using an ID parameter. We're going to delete a quote again by ID, uh, update a quote by ID. But this time we're going to get a completely random. We're going to return one random uh, quote. And we're going to use this in a future app to actually um, display random quotes. So we're going to say get random quote. Now in here, we're just going to say router.get, and we're going to say forward slash random. We're then going to say async, say rec, res, and now in here, we're going to say, we need to actually get the count. We need to know how many posts we actually have to be able to get a random number between it. So we're going to say count, and how we do this, we say await, oh, it's equal to await quote dot count documents you could do count but that's that's now no longer a value you can also do estimated document count which i don't know what that does uh, i'm not gonna lie so we're just gonna use count documents and there's a function so we're just gonna pass through parentheses and let's just return this for now let's just say for random we just want to know how many quotes we have in there so let's create this new path um it's going to be a get request so we're just going to copy literally this and just say random and we're just going to hit send so have a look what did we do wrong rest oh we didn't pass anything through our json so it's returned nothing let's hit send again and actually it says we've got two 
How many do we have? One, two. Let's create a new post. Let's just say, best quote ever by um, Son Goku, because it's the only thing I can think of at the time. Send, we've created a new one. That means we go to get all and click send. You can see we now have three quotes. And if we go back here and we do random, you can see it now says free. So that means our count is working. Our count is counting correctly. Now we need to use that count to be able to get a random value. We'll go use math.floor. So we'll go get a random value between zero, math.random, and our maximum number of uh, documents. Then we can do a simple Q is equal to await. And now we need to do quote dot find one like we did before uh, find by ID and find but this time we're just going to find one we can actually pass through we can actually do some attachments here you can see we could do skip which means this how many we're going to skip so let's say we've got random and this comes back with one that means we're going to skip one which we're going to get number two if this comes back as zero we're going to skip number and get number one the first document in the array um, you can also, so what we're going to do is pass random through here. And that's going to skip to a random one. You can also do other things with this. So you can say dot, um, you can say dot find one and you can basically pass some things. So you can say skip. Oh, sorry. If you don't use find one, that's what I was looking for. You can say dot limit and you can say how many you want. So you can say you only want to pass back five. So let's say you had 10 in your thing. You Maybe you don't want to pass them all back. So you do dot limit and dot skip. Um, so you can say we don't want the first five, we want to get the last five. But for now, we're just going to go back to what we we're originally doing. Find one dot skip the random amount we'd randomly generate, which is just going to randomly pass us back. And now we're just going to return that new quote. So now if we click send, you can see we got a random one, super motivating quote. Let's do send again. We got the best quote ever. Send, not so motivating quote. As you can see, we're getting a few of them multiple times over, but it's just completely random each one we get. Um, and there you go. So let's save this route. So I'm just going to do save. We're going to say get a random quote, save that. And now you go, there you go. We've got every single one of our routes here. We've got get all quotes, um, which is set up at the top here, just forward slash. Again, in our app, all we're doing is setting up a new route under the quotes route. So it prefixes it all with this quote. And then we're setting up this model, which takes in content and author. And then we're going into our roots and we're finding quotes using the model, which we require from here to return them all. And then we can create a new one by using a post request uh, to get a new one. We then use a delete request to delete one, a patch request to update one and random. And we also have a get a specific quote by ID. So you can see there's a lot of powerful things you can do with MongoDB. Um, and there's a lot of really other cool things as well. This is just the start of basically setting up a API, a RESTful API with uh, Node.js and MongoDB uh, and Express. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is the end of this video, guys. As you can see, we've set up all our routes and everything we want to do. In the next video, we're going to be creating either a few or a Phenom stack um, application. Uh, where we're going to basically basically create a front end for this app, which is just basically going to use the get random quotes. And we'll maybe have a get all quotes section as well with maybe some pag pagination. So we'll do some skips and some other requests we can pass through here as well. Um, and we'll do like specific ones we can click on here as well. So we're going to use this API to create a front end app, uh, which we can then, or front end web app, which we can use um, uh, with Vue.js or React or any front-end application you actually want to set up. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video, guys. But in this video, uh, in this case, this is the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button, hit that share button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video, guys. So thank you very much, and peace out.